keys they have a matchup going on at the same time and head to head you can see here the Carteret College and May they a bit of history between them and I must say the Carteret College coming out the winners on the last two games the last two occasions and May they getting that win in 2019 twice actually and they'll be looking to seems like a tit for tat thing between these two teams I mean they're rivals here in Mandeville so you know what to expect here we look at the purple and white school the Cartwright College founded in 1919 104 years they've been around their colors the popular purple and white their population is 1175 students they're yet to win any Dacosta Cups yet to win any Ben Francis Cups but the, as their motto says we're building let's hear from coach Oxley what they're building Coach Oxley, a loss in your last game against an unbeaten Manchester High team. Learn anything new about your team from that game? Yes, definitely. I saw that my team showed a lot of character in that game, that they showed how to fight, that they showed how to put the ball on the floor and actually move it around. I saw resilience and for that I was extremely proud of their performance. Well, looking towards today's game, Mayday High, the last time you played them, you beat them 4-0. You expect anything different from them in this one? Well, it's the last game of the round. I'm expecting that they will be coming at us. They will be coming to prove a point. I think no team wants to lose the last game of the season. So I'm expecting a hard, challenging game, but we are up to the task. We will be playing our pattern of football and we'll be imposing ourselves on the game as much as possible. Well, you currently sit in third position on 15 points. I'm still mathematically alive. I don't know how good your mathematics is, but in terms of the prospects of getting through via that third spot. How important is this game today? This game is like a finals for us. This game is a must-win game. I know that the guys have already been briefed as to what is at stake today. So I do know that they will come out today, they will give a good showing, and they know that everything is on the line today. It's just a win at all costs. Yeah, the car right there, they know what they need to do. Can they be led by our water player to watch? He's sporting that popular purple and white jersey of the West. Raheem Russell, he's 18 years of age. It's his second season in the competition. He's a midfielder, so he'll be looking to pull the strings. And not only pull the strings, he's sporting nine appearances, tallying 11 goals. So not just a creative midfielder, but a goal scorer. So we'll definitely look out for him. One team that should look out for him is this school, Mayday High, founded in 1954. 69 years they've been around. Their colors, the popular blue and gold. Their population, 1,178 students. Yet to win any Dacosta Cups. Yet to win any best Ben Francis. But their motto says, only the best is good enough. Let's hear from the May Day High Camp right now. Coach, you face a Mandeville rival today in Decartret. You would have lost 4-0 to them earlier in the season. What do you expect to get out of this game today? Well. If my boys had played properly like how they have been taught, the Carter College shouldn't have given us four nils. So today on my mind, it's a revengeful game today. And in terms of preparation on the training ground, what do you plan on executing today to make sure you get that revenge? I want to make sure my boys play that game that they have been taught. Pass the ball, create spaces and take shots and goal. Because if we don't score any goals, we cannot win. So today, is a gold spray today. Well, maybe they would have missed out on the second round this year, but what are the positives you take from this season? See, my team is a very young team. I have 10 under 16 boys on my team. So we are in a learning process. So next year, we will be a force to be reckoned with. Thank you, Coach. All the best. Thank you too, sir. A drops the mic moment there from coach UL Thompson. Can his boys deliver? Can this boy deliver? Or what a player, player to watch from Mayday High. He's none other than Devante Mighty. Can he muster up a mighty performance here for Mayday? Only 16 years of age. He's a forward in this Mayday High team. It's his first season, but nine appearances, two goals. What can he muster up against the rivals today? We see. Well, I've done plenty talking. I want to be out here playing football with these young men. My time has passed, as I said earlier, but 
you guys have a treat on your hands. Mayday High, the Cartwright College, Mandeville Rivals. It's going to be intense. Revenge or triumph? Let's find out. Stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. Yeah, cool, cool. Mandeville in Manchester. We're at Manchester High School in the parish. A double header is what we have for you this afternoon in the Issa da Costa Cup. First up, a team still with a chance of making it to the second round and another playing their season finale. Decartred College versus Mayday High. The Cartwright College in purple and white, they know this is a massive afternoon for them. They desperately need the three points as they seek to capture one of the best third place teams in this competition. Mayday, oh, they've had to change at least their jerseys. Guess what? They are out of the competition, but they will want to finish on a high. Good afternoon and welcome to our live coverage. It is a lovely afternoon here in Mandeville, Manchester. Cool, cool Manchester is what they refer to it as. 
and definitely it's living up to that although we see the sunshine peeking out hopefully we do not get rain as we are accustomed to when we visit this venue when we visit this parish and uh, these two teams are getting ready for battle my name ricardo chambers and i'm working alongside chris taylor for the afternoon as we look at the officiating party it will be Andre Farkasen in the middle, Gavin Carvalho, the first assistant, Kernoy Reed, the second assistant, and Carrington Biza, the fourth official for this contest. Well, let's have a look at the lineups then, shall we? Starting with the Decartrate College team. They start with a 4-3-3 formation. They will have Jordan Marshall in goal. A back four, Jaheem Scaife at left back, Rasad Bailey at right back, Andrew Simpson and Javon Davis in the heart of their defense. Giovanni Anderson, Israel Edwards and Raheem Russell in the middle and a front three of Najeri Gale, Antoine Baker and Tyane Lambert. And how about Mayday? They want to finish this competition on a high and get a fourth win this campaign. They have a 3-5-2 formation. Janoy Sinclair will be in goal. Left back Malik Anderson, Sean Senior at centre back and right back Joel Forbes making up a back three. Malachi Booth, Javante Wright and Dave Hines along with Tion Reed and Devonte Mighty, the white men in the middle with Carlin Bent and Sajay Roberts up front for the UL Thompson coached Mayday High. Good afternoon, Chris. Such an important contest, this one, especially for the Cartwright College. They still have an opportunity to make it into the second round of this competition, but they need all three points today. Yeah, important game last time out. Dominated this Mayday team. Coach Ewell Thompson from Mayday thought that his team should have done better. And a real chance for both these teams to express themselves in a TV game. That in itself, a feat of its own. And yeah, Mayday will be hoping to get what is their fourth win of the season this their best result in terms of a season and coach Thompson thinks that there's a lot of positives to take away from this the Carchet, of course for much of the season have been the best third place team in the Costa Cup and they'll be hoping to cement their spot in the second round today certainly we'll be looking to do that Kimani mentioned it in the pre-game build-up but really do have to make a comment as uh, the contract come forward the flag is up for offside they have some dangerous men in attack and the Cartwright college including their big number 10 raheem russell who has scored some 11 goals this campaign and they are coached the Cartwright college by omar oxley has done a fabulous job with this team and uh, hoping that he can take them through to the second round of the competition actually played on the team in, 20, in 2005 where they had their best result, the Cartwright. They went all the way to the quarterfinals before losing to Mannings. And he was a part of that team in 2005. Came out of the zone last year in 2022 as well. And were beaten by Garvey Maceo in the second round. In fact, they were destroyed by, by Garvey Maceo. But good to see a bit of consistency. It seems as if the Cartwright are going to come out of the zone again. So back-to-back -back years, a major accomplishment for them. Yeah, they need the victory this afternoon, though, to put themselves in an even better position. If they win this contest, they'll have 60% of the available points from the opening round. But if they don't win, then it would go down to 50. And without doubt, give some other third place teams an opportunity to advance. Love the surface here at Manchester High School, significantly improved from the last time I saw it. There's the main day head coach, Ewell Thompson. Yeah, Thompson actually comes from the parish of Trelawney, so the opposite side of the island. Of course, we are south central here in Manchester. He hails from the northwestern side of the island. Bright start here for Mindy High School. They have possession once again. Dave Hines was trying to break free. He had Tion Reed away to his left, but not having the vision to see him on that occasion. The winner throw though with Malik Anderson. Mayday trying to get closer to goal. Here is Anderson again. Does well looking for options. 
and it's cleared away from the top of the 18-yard area. Just trying to get Antoine Baker to run onto it for Descartes. No luck for him. Giovanni Anderson trying to pick it up in the middle. They escape down the right-hand side. With Lambert. And Lambert comes under a challenge from Tion Reed. And it will be a throw for Descartes College. Sean Bailey with the throw. Gets it back. Here is Russell, the very dangerous Russell for Descartes College. Ran into traffic. And the ball is poked into touch for a throw. Player to watch today, Russell. 11 goals, two assists for the attacking midfielder. Was a part of the team last year that made it out of the zone as well, Russell. 18 years old now in his third Acosta Cup campaign. Actually started his high school career at Glenmuir, made the switch across to the Carteret in 2019 and has become a pivotal part of their setup. The Carteret head forward again. Here's a lovely chance. That's a tremendous challenge coming in. Desperate but timely. Excellent to see that kind of challenge from a Mayday perspective. They have struggled defensively this year. They've conceded some 22 goals in their nine matches. Have Mayday actually have a negative goal difference. So seeing a challenge coming like that in coming like that early is a positive sign for them. Yeah, it was Malachi Booth with a challenger. A big man is Malachi Booth. As Baker gets a good cross in right across the face of Cole. And it goes further away, and Mede will come away with it. Devontae Mighty sending the ball into the center, headed down by Javante Wright. Mede stringing passes together here, but they're unable to get their act together and go further forward. DeCartre College doing great mopping up work. Still Mede, though, with Sajit Roberts over on the far right-hand side. The ball goes the other way. It will be the Cartridge ball. But this is a bright start for Mayday. They are not playing like a team that does not have a chance of making it to the second round of the competition. And they have definitely come out to this one with a lot of purpose. And they are giving the Cartridge a real challenge in the first five and a half minutes of this contest. For both teams, it is their final game in the opening round of the competition. Sean Senior stands over this free kick for Mayday. Numbers inside the box to aim for. It's high and comfortable for the 18-year-old Jordan Marshall in goal for De Cartwright. De Cartwright again. Well, that's a lovely ball released for Tay Lambert. Lambert gets taken down, and this will be the first card of the afternoon. Malik Anderson with the challenge, and he sees yellow in the seventh minute, and a free kick coming up for the and an opportunity, Chris, to test Janoy Sinclair in goal. Yeah, best of the play so far for the getting forward. Very young front line they have as well. As you see the foul there on Lambert, who is just 16 years of age, tying Lambert, playing in that right wing position. 16, 14, and 15, the ages of the front three for the Cartwright. Yeah, Lambert 16, but does have a lot of the Costa Cup experience already in his third season. The big number 10, Raheem Russell, the 18-year-old, stands over it for the Cartwright. There's also Andrew Simpson, another 18-year-old who is there as well. In his third Acosta Cup season as well, coming across from Mount St. Joseph. And he strikes it well, produces a diving save out of Janoy Sinclair. And now the flag is up. Well, that wasn't a bad strike from Andrew Simpson. Good pace behind it from Simpson. Good direction as well, but yeah, goalkeeper Sinclair equal to the task. But again, you can see the direction of play. It was like that in the first leg when they won by four goals to nil the Cartwright. And although maybe they think they thought they underperformed, it has continued in that vein in terms of the momentum of the Cartwright. 
Yeah, it's a pretty even start to this one. You'll have to say those, the Cartwright have a position. Here they are looking for Lambert. They find Lambert. Lambert has two to aim for inside the box. And once again, it was Manakai Booth who found himself in the way to make the stop. Eight and a half minutes gone in this contest. Still no goals. De Kortrick trying to turn the screws now as they look for the opening goal in their quest for a spot in the second round of this competition. Russell with the throw. Can it's deep inside the box. Came out to Javon Davis who was looking for a left-footed drive, but was always under pressure, never in control of it. They do win a corner kick, though. It will be their first of the contest. Much better at the attacking side of things, De Cartwright, than me. The 26 goals they have scored in the season, De Cartwright, compared to just 12 from 15 for May Day. So no surprise here that they are on the offense. Raheem Russell with the corner kick, just waiting on the instructions from referee Farkison gets it now here's a ball delivered high to the back post brilliant run from Javon Davis managed to get a boot onto it but wasn't able to turn it on target hasn't scored so far this season Davis just one assist for him and yeah coming in well brave attempt as well from the number 17 the center back kept his eye on it and just wide You'd have to say Sinclair was there again, though. Yeah, he definitely was. There's a, a long ball played forward for Mayday, asking Theon Reed to do some running. He was never going to get to that. Jordan Marshall getting the jump done in goal for DeCartrick College and bangs it upfield. Work for Joel Forbes to do in the back line. Doesn't do it well. And DeCartrick College have possession but only momentarily it's been 10 engaging minutes this the country surface that allows them to put the ball on the ground that certainly couldn't have been the surface. But yeah, lovely green conditions. There's been a lot of rain in, in Manchester, in Mandeville especially as well, so that has facilitated the surface. But yeah, it really looks good, Ricardo. Really looks good, feels good as well. Yeah, the beautiful thing is that we now have sunshine as Javante Wright gets on the ball. Back to Malik Anderson. Anderson delivers a cross, was looking for Sajay Roberts. It's very difficult to miss Sir Jay Roberts. Well, I say he's difficult to miss. That's because he is the smallest player on the park. But I guess that could also make him difficult to spot. Mede on the front foot. Here he goes. Here is Roberts. Under pressure. Loses possession. Whistle for handled ball. Free kick for De Cartwright deep inside their own half. They look to make the transition quick and direct, maybe too quick. And they give up possession right away. Here is Malik Anderson. Now with Joel Forbes. In fact, Sean Senior. Senior sends it long. Well, one in the middle by Javante right for May Day. Spreads it forward. Too much weight onto that. And Jordan Marshall has an easy time at it in goal.
Mede at times playing a very high line and it's clear that the Decatrix plan is to play that long ball over the top and try and split the defence as they have tried here. Very quick front three for the Decatrix and they are backing their pace against the high line of Mede. Dangerous from Mede and they'll have to be careful about that. Yeah, there is uh, Antoine Baker, just 14 years old, sporting the number nine for Decatrix College in his second season in the Dacosta Cup. Also does a little bit of track and field for Decatrix College, so one suspect he has some speed on him. By the time he is 16, he'll be a Dacosta Cup veteran, Chris. You're telling me. Love the sunshine now here at Manchester High School. Still no goals in this first of two encounters live on the home of champions on this Saturday. As this one is played inside the box and poked over the top by Malachi Booth. He's been brilliant on the defensive end. In the final analysis, that looked more like a defensive clearance than a shot and goal, but he finds himself in a lovely position there but maybe not as comfortable in attack as he is in defence. Yeah, kept his eye on it, which was a good sign. But as you said, used to clearing the ball, and that technique was exactly that. And then held his head after, probably didn't realise what end of the park he was at. Sloppy work there by Rasod Bailey for Decatrix College, giving up possession. It's a throw for Mayday, deep in their opponent's half. Let's see what they can make of this. Russell picks it up for the country now. Let's see what he has. Does well to get around Malachi Booth, but then the pass left a lot to be desired. Maybe had more room to head further forward as Roberts picks it up for Mayday. Mayday escaping with it over on the right with Mighty. Mighty does well to swing one inside the box. Comes back out to Russell for the country. Now with Israel Edwards. He loses possession and mighty has it again for Mainty over on the far right hand side. But he is close marked, is Devonte Mighty. <laughs> Throw inside the box. Javante Wright was trying to hit it on for Mainty. No success there, and the country will escape with it. Edwards with the quick touch, and now they look to head forward. Really strong challenge coming in on Andrew Simpson over on that far side. And it was Javante Wright. No nonsense challenge there, ensuring that the Cartwright College could not advance. Here is Rasad Bailey. Lovely find from the goalkeeper as well. Yeah, brilliantly done. Here they come now with the 14-year-old Baker. Baker does well. Can he get one inside? Back to Bailey. And Bailey loses possession. That was a pretty good position for them to be in the Cartwright College. Bailey fighting for it again with Javante Wright. Wright does well, but the pass is not a great one. And Jaheem Scaife will clean up. Oh, here is an opportunity. The referee points to the spot. And against the run of play, maybe, Mede will have the opportunity to go in front here at Manchester High School. Sloppy at the back. The ball came back to Marshall. And that was asking a little bit too much. Put him under pressure, the goalkeeper, and then committing the challenge. There it was. Ill-timed by Marshall. And wow, just like that, Mayday with an opportunity. Haven't scored against the Cartwright this season. And now they can change that. A marvelous opportunity for Mayday to change that and take the lead. Just what the Cartwright College did not want. Remember, they are the ones, the Cartwright in purple and white, still with a chance of making it through to the second round of this competition. But Mayday have come out with tremendous purpose this afternoon and they have an opportunity to go in front. 
Jordan Marshall, the 18-year-old in gold in his second season, says he wants to become a commercial pilot in the future. Here's an opportunity to fly, and uh, hopefully he can come up with a save. He certainly had Carlon Bent flying after that challenge. Carlin Bent. Seems as if he'll be the one to take it for Mayday. The number nine has scored four goals this season, has the opportunity to equal Javante Wright as his team's leading scorer. Is the penalty easy? In fact, it was Javante Wright who took it. Scores his third penalty of the season, his sixth goal of the campaign, and made a lead 1-0 over the Cartwright in the 19th minute. Well converted from Wright, the leading goal scorer. Half a dozen on the season, and half of those six have come from 12 yards. Very confident in his run-up, very straight run-up, not really giving the goalkeeper much of a clue and then opened up his body. Wrong foot in Marshall. And yeah, slightly against the run of play. Yeah, I wondered for a second because it appeared to me and that it was Carlin Bent, the number nine, who was going to be taking it. And I wondered because Javante Wright has been the penalty taker for main here this season. And he duly stepped up, Chris, and put it away with consummate ease. Yeah, had us all fooled, was looking away from goal as if he was talking to his teammates, but he was just waiting on the whistle. There he is, the number 10. 16 goals now, made a this season. Well, the Cartwright need to get their act together. Here's a free kick, lovely ball floated inside, headed away. Very good work from Mainty. And once again, they can escape. Ball is given away in the center though to Lambert. Lambert over the top, asking Baker to run onto it, but Janoy Sinclair and Cole got there first. They are persisting with the ball over the top, the contract, and Chris, I'm not sure it has worked so far. No, I think at times, instead of going with a long ball wide to pull the Mayday defense out of position, they have gone in, in central regions. And right now, Mayday defending in a very narrow way, so it's made it easier for them. Plus, it must be said that the balls over the top haven't been the, the most accurate either. Edwards for De Cartwright. Spritz it wide for Bailey. Bailey gets around one. Attempting to whip a ball inside the box and it was charged down. Corner kick coming up. Their second of the contest as De Cartwright go in pursuit of the equalizer. Raheem Russell takes the corner kick short. Here is Russell. Finds Kafe. It was Kafe who took the corner kick short, laying it off to Russell. And we saw take the first one. Throw for De Cartwright. It was clear from listening to coach Ewell Thompson in pre-game, Chris, that Mindy were coming into this match with a lot of belief that they could topple this De Cartwright College team as Raheem Russell stands over this corner kick, whips it into the near post, well headed away by Tian Reed. 
Rising high, not the ball, whipped inside, forces goalkeeper Sinclair to punch over the top. More like it from the Kadrit. They certainly need to press this mayday defence line, which is what they were doing in the early 15 minutes or so. Good delivery towards the near post on that occasion. But so far, as you said, mayday, their concentration have been, has been good at the back and the goalkeeper has been very alert. Genoa is clear. Another corner kick whipped in. And they'll have an opportunity for a fourth. And they're coming in numbers now. Russell again gets this one high. Excellent defending. Yeah, glancing header away from the target from the tallest player on the park, maybe. I was wondering if it was Dave Hines initially with the header. Or was it Anderson? I think it was Hines. Yeah, it was Dave Hines. Yeah. As we get to the water break, Chris Taylor, it's not a bad afternoon because we've seen significantly hotter and more humid conditions throughout the course of the schoolboy football season. And although we have beautiful sunshine, it's relatively cool here in Mandeville, Manchester. No surprise based on the altitude here in Manchester, even when the sun is out. It's usually pretty cool as well. But yeah, the players will be enjoying the conditions. And from a neutral's perspective, you'd have to say that the fact that Mayday went ahead, good for the game, because the Cartridge have been the front runners, beat them 4-0 in the first encounter. So this will force the hand of the Cartridge, who really, in terms of longevity of the season, they're the only ones with something to attain here in terms of going through to the second round. Mayday are already out. Even three points today will leave them in fourth position with 12 points. And this is the last game of the round so last game of the season as you said earlier for me they but they want to finish on a positive so the cartridge it, it actually forces them now to be a lot more innovative in their play to be a lot more clinical in terms of their chances and to push for the equalizer first and then try and go on for three points yeah they are pushing but will be disappointed i think that they haven't gotten a goal yet this was a fixture that between 2017 and 2019, Mayday certainly dominated. But the last couple seasons, it's been a Decatur show. 4-1 and 4-0. The only results between these two in the last four years, and it's both been Decatur victories. Tying Lambert with the throw. Booted away, comes to Roberts. The little man under pressure from Bailey. The country comes away with it with the big imposing figure of Israel Edwards. And now they look to put the ball on the ground. Here is it, Bailey again. That time it was given away by Giovanni Anderson. Experienced campaigner Giovanni Anderson in his fourth season of the Costa Cup football. Wouldn't know it from that last pass. Yes, I love the ball spread over to Tyne Lambert. Lambert gets inside the box. The cross is not bad, but too much height on it. And it gives Joel Forbes the opportunity to clear for Mainte. Not enough players in the box. The players arriving late to the far side of the box from the Cartridge. And even though, as I said, it was in a dangerous position, that delivery does not enough purple shirts in there. Backed away by Malachi Booth. Made a free kick with Malik Anderson standing over it. Or is it Sean Senior? It is Sean Senior standing over it. Senior sets it long. Effort towards the target. But Mingde really fighting here. Yeah, playing with a 3-5-2 formation and so far defensively, 
doing very well. When they have been called upon, especially deliveries into the 18 yard area, they have been winning most of the aerial duels. They do they have the advantage in terms of height, but as I said, concentration so far good. And this is an area that they have struggled all season. So good to see the improvement. I guess saving the best for last. Anderson with the throw for Mindy. Goes high and long. Headed into touch for another Mindy throw. Not only do they have the lead Mindy, but they are very much into this one. Giving as much as they are getting. Whenever they try to go forward to Cartwright College, they just seem short on numbers as the ball is sprayed over onto the wide right hand side. Devonte Mighty with the attempted cross that was charged down and a corner kick coming up for Mayday. This is their second of the encounter. <laughs> Heading up towards half an hour in this one. Over the top from Dave Hines. Seemed as if he had an eternity as the ball came towards him, but wasn't able to keep it down and on target. Yeah, I'm not sure if Coach Thompson there was signaling that he wanted the use of head, the head instead of the foot. It was a bit of a high foot there as well from Hines. Booth won it well for Mainty. Bailey got it back for DeCartrick College. And again. again, the pass premature and inaccurate. Again, just asking too much of the forward line from DeCartrick. They need to be a little bit more accurate. There's nothing wrong with the idea, but the accuracy needs to be better. For their sake, hopefully, the panic button hasn't already been pressed because still such a long way to go in this contest. Had things all their, their own way in the first leg. So maybe a bit surprised that may they have been so assertive and so determined in this one so far. And little by little, may they come in into the game a lot better within the middle of the park because it was all purple for the first 15 minutes in the middle of the park. But now may they a lot more presence especially the likes of Malachi Booth, their number four, in that defensive midfield role, breaking up a lot more play. That's him again causing problems, the May Day number four. It's a very ugly role, but one that is so important in modern football, that defensive midfield role, which sometimes doesn't get the praise it deserves. Malachi Booth is certainly getting that this afternoon because his workman-like performance has helped his team to the early advantage. There's Jamar, Jerome Larmond, production manager from Sportsmax, actually a former Decatric graduate. There's Kemar Baker. He attended Mindy High School, Kemar Baker. Mm. So there's a rivalry here. Yeah, videographer now, but back then said he ran the 800. I'm not sure I believe him, but... <laughs> Oh, apparently he, he has been telling others that he played the Costa Cup as well. You believe that one, though? I, I, I'm not sure <laughs> what to believe, to be <laughs> honest. Yellow card, second one of the contest coming out. And uh, looks as if it was Booth who got it. What did Jerome Larman say he played? Hopscotch. plays a bit of basketball and football. There's a foul. Again, it's Booth in the thick of things. 33rd minute of this contest. Mayday with the advantage. 
As the Kartrick College who can still advance to the second round of this competition, but they need a win if they are to solidify themselves as one of the best third place teams. The top two positions in this group already taken by Manchester High and Belair, who come up in the second game of this doubleheader later on. Here is a long range effort. Couldn't keep it down over the top. That's a happy bench. So Jay Roberts might be a little man, but he has a big heart. And so far today, a pretty big game as well. De Cartwright heading forward. Can they make something of this? Flag is up for offside. Tain Lambert, the 16-year-old, looking for his third goal this campaign. He's not going to get it from an offside position, though not with Carvalho right on the money, the first assistant. That was a little bit better from the cartridge. The ball a lot more accurate. The run was made a little bit too early. But yeah, like the waiting of that pass. This man would know the surface very well, Ricardo. Did coach for a while at Manchester under Andrew Edwards and even Donovan Duke when they got to the semi-finals, Manchester High. A couple spells with the school. Has, has actually done a lot of coaching work throughout the parish of Manchester generally. Had a stint with Charlemont as well last as season. Coach, yeah. Yes, as the head coach. And now he is back at Descartes College where I think he feels most at home. Yeah, his stint with Manchester was an, as an assistant coach. Yes. So a, a chance at Charlemont to lead things. And as I said, he's doing good things with the cartridge. Made it heading forward, looking to make it 2-0. Good defending. In many ways, he could be considered a protege of Donovan Duki, who he worked under as assistant coach here at Manchester High. Of course, Duki back for his second stint as the head coach of Manchester High. But we'll be talking a lot about them later on. There is Oxley. <laughs> Also a graduate of the GC Foster College, that's where he's studied. Does have a, a D license at the GFF level, so building his resume. Omar, a, a young coach, but obviously, as you said, um, having an influence here with these boys and, and, and doing good things in a parish generally. A parish that is still looking for its first title at the Costa Cup level. Yeah, and he has a really good mixture of youth and experience to work with in this Descartes setup. A number of experienced players playing in their third and fourth seasons, but a number of really young ones as well, like the front three that you mentioned. And if, of course, he can hold on to a number of those players. And when you look at the history of Descartes, they've always produced these one-off sports personalities as sportsmen the persons have popped up in track every now and then but as a unit they haven't been able to produce enough talent to really challenge the big boys as it, as you'd like to say even in cricket they have produced a couple of cricketers but a team of, 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 of big talent is what they have lacked generally it's a good cross coming inside headed on by Bailey the one thing I can tell you about these the Cartwright College students they cannot be accused of not doing a good job of balancing education oh, and sport yeah. and a number of these players on the De Cartwright College team with eight and nine CXC subjects plus four Cape units as well from uh, their first uh, sitting of the Cape examinations with uh, their unit two exams set for May, June next year. Yeah, their academics have always been up to scratch the country. Yeah, here is Baker heading forward. Can he produce an equalizing goal? He tumbles over, won't get any call, and Sean Senior will come away with it for May Day. 
Mayday really holding their own here in this contest. And you can't think of a clear-cut opportunity that the Cartwright College has produced so far in this contest. No, lots of action in and around the 18-yard area of Mayday. But as I said, the concentration of both the goalkeeper and the defence line for Mayday have been excellent so far. Won most of the area duels and there have been good balls put into the area. Let's see if that can continue for 90 minutes though. There another example, well tracked. 3-5-2 the formation they're playing but requires a lot of organisation and does require the two flank midfielders to tuck in and, and get back defensively and so far that's been happening. And with all of that playing a high line as well defensively. You could see how they could be exploited though by a much better attacking unit. Well, and, and yeah, and certainly with, with, with the passes being a little bit more accurate. I, as I said, I, I don't have a major problem with the plan of the cartridge in terms of that ball over the top to catch out the back line. But as you said, timing a bit off at times and certainly the accuracy not fully there yet. Lovely turn. But the shot was weak from Giovanni Anderson. Bailey lays it off. Anderson gets it back to Bailey. There's the equaliser. The Cartwright College put it together brilliantly. And Rashad Bailey nails it. And it's 1 1. Third goal of the season for Bailey. And just as we spoke about the organisation of the back line of Mayday. De Cartwright, a little bit more creative. Good turn there by Giovanni, and that was a lovely finish into the far corner by Bailey. Giovanni Anderson, the creator, picking up his fifth assist of the season, scored a brace in the last fixture. Did Anderson, this time he's a provider, and that was a lovely finish by Bailey. 40th minute equaliser. Well, their motto, we are building the cartridge, and they are certainly doing that as the first half deepens. Yeah, that will definitely ease whatever tension that would have been building up on the, the cartridge college bench. Edificamos, their motto. There's another lovely ball, this time to Russell. Oh, the first touch let him down. Not too sure. He was sure exactly where he wanted to take that ball. I was thinking based on the, the, how slow the ball was moving, he probably could have hit it one time instead of taking that touch. It really is a lovely afternoon here in Mandeville. For the second minute of this encounter, there's the man who got the equalizing goal for the Contract College. As Chris pointed out, his third goal of the season. And an extremely important one. Yeah, for once around the 18 yard areas, there's a little bit more composure from the Decatrich attackers. Patience as well. Just that lovely turn by Anderson, who is on the ball now, and then look at that for a pass again. And Bailey this time gets the flag. But what you're seeing now, it's the same plan from the Cartwright, but the passes are a little bit better now, the waiting a little bit better. I mean, yeah, they, they are guilty of, of getting a little bit too carried away with the runs and being caught offside, but the passes now. Next thing they'll want to do, the Cartwright College is regain control of the midfield because they've allowed Mayday to, I think, dominate the middle of the park in the second half of this first period. Yeah. 
Here's Edwards, backed it over the top, Israel Edwards was never in control of that, almost looked surprised that the ball had fallen in his favour and just could not keep it down. Not used to scoring is Israel Edwards, yet to score this season, the captain, two assists and just didn't look comfortable. He scored those CXC subjects though, has nine of them, along with his 4K units. Very well spoken. Israel, yeah. I, I was having a conversation with him before the game. It was actually he who decided to put together all the assists um, for, our, for our tabulation of the statistics. And he was aware of what everybody had done and did, a, did, did some quick math there to say, OK, we've scored 26 goals. There were five penalties. So here are the 21 assists. <laughs> Lead, leader in the classroom and on the pitch. Sporting the number 15, 18 years old, among the oldest of the Decatur College players. Here is Roberts who picks it up for May Day now. He's quickly put under pressure by Roberts who won it for Decatur. And then Javon Davis went all the way back to his goalkeeper. Here is Davis again. 45th minute of this first half. Into space. But Lambert wasn't in the mood. Bailey gets on to the end of it. Bailey with the cross. Not much support inside the box. Russell trying to win it. And I think it was Joel Forbes who got it away. Oh, there's a ferocious drive. That forced Janoy St. Clair to come up with a save. Mind you, it was hit directly at him, but it was hit with so much power that it almost knocked him into the back of the net. Yeah, lovely technique, lovely in-step drive, leaning over the ball, everything perfect about it. But Sinclair has been alert right from the start and did the job. Corner kick is not a bad one. The hitter from Javon Davis, down and away from the target. What a glorious chance that was to put his team in front. Still looking for his first of the season. Another telling delivery from the corner flag. He should have scored. Should have scored. Davis just looked like he was too far away from the header in the end, so it didn't make a great connection on his forehead. Three minutes added on at the end of this first half. Here is Davis again, finds his captain Edwards. Edwards with his back turned to the target, does well. Oh, then switches. I love the ball inside for Bailey. Bailey's onside, cuts it inside, and the goalkeeper does brilliantly. Chenoy Sinclair at his very best. Keeps the score level at 1-1. Lambert under pressure from Roberts and gives up the throw. I don't know if you realize, Chris, but I think the entire Decatur bench has been warming up from the first minute of this contest and they haven't stopped. Yeah, it started out with Octavian Neview, their number two, who was warming up just from the start. And then the entire bench, when they went down by a goal to nil, <laughs> got up and started warming. I don't think coach Omar Oxley was happy at all with the performance. And he said, OK, all of you, let's go. The corner kicks are piling up now for Decatur College and they have another one in the dying moments of the first half. Nice buzz around Manchester High School and it will grow as the afternoon goes on because Manchester High group leaders will be in action later on. Here's the left-footed drive from Giovanni Anderson who provided the assist for the equalizing goal for the Carteret, but no power on the shot. And Janoy Sinclair has looked quite competent and you wouldn't expect him to have any issues with that. Reed goes forward for Mete. Lambert joins him. Reed does well. Swings it inside. This is a glorious chance. And the ball was taken off the boot of Sajay Roberts. By Simpson. Great defensive work from the Decatur at number 12. Terrific work from Andrew Simpson. Transferred from Mount St. Joseph last season. 
And definitely he's been a worthwhile get for this De Cartwright setup. Yeah. Was alert and quick. And he had to be. Because it looked as if that would have been a second goal for Mehdi. Yeah, decisive as well. Here is Javante Wright. Didn't take it down well, but still has a chance. And now he's bonded off the ball. And the first touch been better. Then Jordan Marshall would have been tested in the De Cartwright College goal. But no more tests, at least not for the first stanza of this one. Mayday struck first. De Cartwright College responded. There's the man who got the equalizer for them, Rashad Bailey. After Javonte Wright had given Mayday the lead from the penalty spot in the 19th minute, his third penalty scored this season and it leaves Omar Oxley the coach of the Cartwright College no doubt at ease at the end of the first 45 minutes the Cartwright College won Mayday won Cap Nations League action on Sportsmax 2. The Bahamas taking on Antigua and Barbuda live later on today, 5 p.m. 6 ECT. Honduras versus Cuba live on Sunday, 7 p.m. 8 ECT. Massive match that one as they try to join Jamaica as quarterfinal qualifiers from League A. Suriname will also be up against Grenada. All the matches in Group A being played at 7 p.m. 8 ECT, including this one, Haiti versus Jamaica from the Haisley Crawford Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago. Back in Mandeville, Manchester, Manchester High School specifically is where we're at. And Mayday taking on the Cartwright College. It's 1-1 entering the second half. Mayday took a 19th minute lead and the Cartwright responded with about five minutes to go in the first half. The Cartwright College still have a chance of advancing to the second round of this competition, but they must do it as one of the best third place teams. Mayday, they cannot advance, but they're looking to finish strongly at the start of the contest. Their coach, Uriel Thompson, said that they felt that the 4-0 scoreline in the first leg was not a true reflection of the quality of his team and that they felt they would have a chance in this encounter and they have definitely backed him up on that with a very good performance so far but we still have 45 minutes to play let's get the second half underway and it's the Cartwright College who gets the kickoff Ricardo Chambers alongside Chris Taylor and a lovely surface for these players to operate on. And a lovely surface, Chris Taylor, for someone to be the hero from either side. Yeah, the Cartwright College in the half well. They started the first half well, ended it well. And they would have been certainly happy to get that equaliser before the end of the first half. And they will certainly be the team trying to force the advantage here in this second half. They are the one who have the opportunity to advance, the chance to advance to the second round. And as you said, for much of the season, the, the leading third place team in the Costa Cup. And they want to ensure that they, they keep their aggregate high. They have a free kick early in the second half. Lots more firepower as well in terms of goal scoring in the Cartridge College. 27 goals this season and quite a few goal scorers. Looks like Russell standing over it. 
Raheem Russell steps off, floats this one high. Again getting to the back post was Javon Davis. Had the best headed opportunity in the first half to Davis. But no surprise that Sinclair was there again, strong as ever. Janai Sinclair, the goalkeeper, and making it very difficult for him. I've been impressed from his, by his work so far, the Mayday goalkeeper. Very alert here. He's keeping his eye on the ball all the way through. Came up with a strong right hand as well. And probably that did some damage to the face of Davis. Certainly did. Look more like the ball hit Davis' head than he headed it. Yeah, I think he picked up a fist as well. I think he did for sure. And unfortunately, both players down, goalkeeper Janoy Sinclair and Javon Davis for the Cartwright College. Well, Sinclair is back up and he's ready to go, the goalkeeper. It's just Davis down, the big centre-back, number 17. Had a couple of opportunities in the first half. Had a side-footed attempt after an overlapping run, which he hit into the side triangle. And then the last opportunity from the corner, where he should have put his head on target, didn't make great connection. And the Cartwright lost the chance to go ahead. Corner kick to the Cartwright. This one headed wide of the target. Got a pretty good look at it, the captain. Israel Edwards couldn't hit the mark. One one, forty ninth minute. Well, majority of the bench for the Cartwright has returned to the bench. But I can still tell you that number two, Nevio, is still warming up. <laughs> and we're in the second half. Hey, He's going to be pretty sad around. if he doesn't get an opportunity to play today. Yeah. He's I a think... centre forward. The number two, unusual to see a number two wearing, a centre forward wearing number two. I think maybe this is his way of telling the coach he's ready. Could have been problematic, but the Cartwright College escape. With Skaith. Now Anderson. Looking for Najari Gale. Too much weight on that, and Janoy Sinclair is there. Yeah, again, that should have been an easy pass for Anderson, who did create the goal for the Cartwright. Should have done better on that occasion. Mighty for Mayday. Now with right, the goal scorer loses off. Picked up by Giovanni Anderson for De Cartwright. Just a little sting taken out of the game at the start of this second half. It's not a bad effort, you know. Coming from Javante Wright, looking for his seventh goal of the season. Has already scored today from the penalty spot. Just over the top.
Forbes. Mede in position. Long ball looking for Roberts. Didn't get to the little man. Won by Edwards, the Decartrait College captain. Lays it off right side. Here he is again. The Decartrait on the front foot looking to slip this one through for Baker. But once again, Janois in clear alert and getting there first. Yeah, the weighting of, the weighting of the pass is still a bit of a concern for me and the, the, the Cartwright team. And a lot of those passes not necessarily difficult, but just not judging them properly. And that's why they haven't created more opportunities. Five goals the Cartwright have scored in this fixture this season. Conceded just the one. So it's been an improvement from Amede's perspective, which is what Coach Thompson was talking about, that he expected his, his charges to produce better today. And so far, it's, it's been that scenario. It's been just that much improved Amede. In the first encounter, they just really weren't in the game at all and lost by four goals to nil. Yeah, Keena Wright coming on for the Cartwright College, replacing Tyin Lambert. Has scored twice this season, Keena Wright. Also has an assist. Plays an attacking midfielder generally. Does right. Make the will be making a change themselves. Kaido Cockett will be coming on momentarily. Well won by Israel Edwards. Packs it over onto the far right hand side. Kept in play. Here is Wright. Just came onto the park. Escaped with the football. And the cross inside is played behind by Malachi Booth for a corner kick. Not fluent by any means, but yeah, they do win a corner. De Cartret, and their deliveries into the area from the corner flag have been pretty good this afternoon. Raheem Russell, 11 goals this season, looking to add to that tally. But he's trying to assist the go-ahead goal as the change is made for Mende. Tion Reed is off, replaced by Kaida Cockett. Corner kick coming up for Raheem Russell. It's a big number 10 player to watch for the Cartwright College. This one is high. Headed back inside, should be cleared. It isn't cleared. Anderson does well. And eventually runs out of real estate. And the ball goes behind for a goal kick to Mayday. 56th minute of this one. Israel Edwards came on the pressure from Javante Wright and Mayday will come away with it. Roberts into space up front. But he won't get there before Javon Davis. Lovely cool Saturday afternoon at Manchester High School and the support starting to build. 
And do you expect a massive crowd when Manchester play Belair in the second game of this double header? Both teams already through to the second round. Manchester leading with maximum 27 points. Of course, Belair, the actual literal neighbours of Dikashek College, right across the road on Woodland Road, where both schools are located. The Cachet on the left, Pelier on the right, if you're coming from the town centre. The Cachet fighting for a best third place position in the Da Costa Cup. But they need to get a win here to enhance their chances. Edwards fighting for the ball, their captain, and he does well to win it. The Cachet escaping down the left hand side with Najari Gale. Gale cuts inside, has a few options, tries to slip this one through. But Sean Senior stood in his way and he stood well too. And now Booth comes away with it for Mindy. Slips it down the left. Oh, that's brilliant work from Javante Wright to steal the football. Gets inside the box. Hit right at Jordan Marshall, who made the stop with his boot. And then mopped things up. Brilliant work from the goal scorer, Javante Wright. might have tried to curl that one around the goalkeeper Chris or was that too much to ask impressive run the goalkeeper's positioning was pretty good at the end of it all don't think the angle was that great but he did well impressive run by Wright such a Roberts and his change of pace was impressive as well Your friend, the number two for the Cartwright College, has finally stopped warming up. Octavian Nephew. Stopped warming up is, is not necessarily a, a good sign. Are you saying he's about to come into the game? I was saying the opposite. Maybe oh. he realizes <laughs> he's not coming into the game. Oh, wow. But still a long way to go as we approach the hour mark in this all-important fixture in the Issa da Costa Cup Scoop World Football Competition. We are in central Jamaica, Manchester High. The Cartwright College can still advance as one of the best third place teams in the competition. They need the win this afternoon, but they're all level against Mendy, a team they beat by four goals to nil when they met earlier in the campaign. And they've had to come from behind as well to be level in this contest. Janoy Sinclair, the Mendy goalkeeper down. Yeah, just a few days ago they met, actually the 7th of October. So it's a week to the day. What a difference seven days can make. Well, School World Football on the Sportsmax and the Sportsmax app, and don't miss the excitement of the various competitions. Download the app from the Google Play or the App Store. Catch all the league action and updates on the Sportsmax app. And there's a view of what you may be witnessing. Download the Sportsmax app today. And uh, Scoop Boy Football, the Issa Scoop Boy Football competitions free on Sportsmax Plus. There's also SSFL from Trinidad and Tobago uh, that you can catch on the Sportsmax app as well. Which is high school football in Trinidad. Very much the case. Two more changes coming up for either team. And guess what, Chris Taylor? Your best friend is about to make his entrance into the game. That's Octavian Nephew. We'll tell you more about that after this pitch side report from Kimania Sullivan. Ricky, come, come, Ricky, come. I wouldn't be aware. Mayday High had to change their original blue jerseys before the game due to a color clash with the purple of the Cartwright College. Mayday, judging by the pace of the game, though, no identification issues out there as it stands for them on the park. But this is the original jersey that you would be seeing on your screen. Not wearing this one, but sporting a green jersey, their alternate kit. That's it for me. Kimani O'Sullivan, he sees blue. I'm sure Chris saw purple. Close enough, their official colors are actually blue and gold, so I'll go with Kimani on that. 
Although the goal looks more orange <laughs> today. Octavian Nephew is into the game for the Cartridge College. We'll tell you who he replaced shortly. As Mighty has it for Mayday. They have a throw over on this near side. There is Nephew replacing the captain, Israel Edwards. Well, that's an attacking change. Of course, Edwards is more of a defensive midfielder. And Nevi, who usually plays in a centre forward role, probably going to be asked to play a, a bit deeper. Let's see. They do no go need goals, do the Cartwright. I still think even with a draw, they could be good enough, Ricardo, to go through as one of the best third-place teams. But as you said, they just wouldn't want to leave it to chance. It'd be the first in their history that they qualify for the second round in back-to-back -back seasons. Yes, it would be a massive deal for the Decartred College fraternity. Quarterfinals in 2005, their best showing. Their current coach was a part of that team. Here is Sir Jay Roberts. Maybe in years to come, he can boast of a quarterfinal finish or being part of it at least. Earl Thompson thinking that all things considered, this has been the best performance from May Day in terms of seasons. Currently in fourth, nine points, including three wins. And he has said, in terms of uh, putting together a season, this has been the best from May Day. Here's a chance. Devonte Mighty couldn't keep his left footed effort on target. Yeah, it wasn't his best finish. And what a chance for Mayday to take the lead. Yeah, never easy with the ball moving like that and still in the air as well. Yeah, it fell nicely for him though. Booth and Bailey battling. Here is Nephew. Gives it away to Roberts. Roberts gets around one, gets taken down. That's surely a yellow card. And there was no doubt about that. Javon Davis with the foul. Free kick coming up for Mainty. They took the lead in the 19th minute. Can they regain the advantage? Jordan Marshall standing firm in goal. Is there a winner to be found in this one? Keena Wright. Roberts. Of course, out of the first round, it will be 32 teams that will qualify for the second round of the De Costa Cup. And currently, the Cartridge College sit in 31st position as the third best third place team. So, yeah, confirms why they desperately need the three points today even though they have currently in the position they are in half qualified, things can change in the last round of matches. Mayday, still pushing for the winner themselves. Roberts gets this one inside the box, comfortably cleared away. The Cartwright with Anderson, he assisted the first goal, gets pushed off the ball and Booth picks it up for Mayday. And Bailey, who himself scored for the Cartwright, won it. And the tussle continues. 
best third place currently, William Nib High, who is sitting in 27th position. Second best third place is St. Mary High. Then the Cartwright, followed by Black River. Four third place teams to make it through to the second round in the Dacosta Cup. Free kick coming up for Mainte. Their goal scorer, Javante Wright, standing over it. Now he leaves it for Devonte Mighty. The contract have to be careful here with just over 20 minutes to go. That's a good ball in from Mighty and the header is sublime. And Mighty have the advantage. They took the lead in the 19th and they lead again in the 68th. And what a terrific finish that was. Malik Anderson with his first of the season. Their big number five at the back. Lovely delivery into the area. Great position of the free kick from Mighty towards the six yard area. And that was a powerful header. No chance for Jordan Marshall down to his left hand side. Authoritative header from Malik Anderson. And wow, May Day with a big lead. A fixture which they dominated between 2017 and 2019. They are looking to bring back that kind of dominance. A fixture in which they dominated only a week ago. The Cartwright College and now they find themselves behind. And it's part of the reason, Chris Taylor, you should never take your opponent for granted. No well, matter what has happened in the past. 4-0 it was just seven days ago to the Cartwright College and Ewell Thompson did say at the start of the game and he has backed up his chat he did say that his school is better than that 4-0 loss and they would show today and they have there's Ewell Thompson figured his boys would leave the best for last on the television screens and they are doing just that that was a lovely goal from Malik Anderson. And I'm sure the statisticians are at work because what will that do to the Cartrick College's chances as one of the best third place teams? Can tell you it doesn't help them. That's a massive blow. Three of the four best third place teams are tied on points and goal difference. What's separating them? I can't see them getting through with 50%, Chris. But you'll never know. They still have 20 minutes to turn this around. Only points for wins, no points for draws, and of course for losses in terms of that best third place position. Yes, you get a point in the table, but in terms of a best third and how the points are allocated to differentiate the teams, nothing for a draw. Yeah, they need two goals in 20 minutes, the Cartwright College. They have scored 27 in nine. In nine games, that is. So they are averaging three goals per game. Here is Raheem Russell. Such a pivotal part of their attack has taken most, if not all, the corners. But he needs a big moment. Here is Jaheem Scaife. Trying to work a quick one, too. Comes to Carlin Bent. Pent slips it into the middle. Pent is on his way. 
Pitt gets inside the box. This is looking dangerous. The shot wasn't dangerous. That's part of the danger for the Cartwright College as they push for the equalizer in the second time in the, for the second time in this contest. This will be a massive letdown for the Cartwright College if they're unable to win this. But I still maintain, Chris Taylor, that I think today, May Day for me has been the better team for most of this one. Given away, might have been going wide anyway, but Jordan Marshall was taking no chances, parrying it behind for a midi corner kick. Here is Javante Wright, slips it in beautifully, charged for 3 1. That would have been good night, sweet prince. But the Cartwright College still have life. Here they go, heading forward with Anderson. Anderson looking to slip that one through. That's cut out. Mede on the attack again. Onside is Devontae Mighty. Mighty looks up, swings the ball inside the box, and now the flag is up. Javonte Wright might be a little bit disappointed that he got caught in an offside position there. Had a day and a half to see exactly where he was. Mighty does well to keep it in play. The contract away with it. Now with Jaheim Scaife. Here is the goal scorer, Bailey. Sends it forward for Gale. And goalkeeper Janoy Sinclair, who has had a very good game as well. Off his line in a jiffy. Here is the chance for 3-1. Wasn't taken. Yeah, Marshall likes to go with his feet instead of his hands. That tackle was a dangerous one. He went in with his right boot, but he got the job done. But yeah, that was a chance to seal it for me, D. And worries for Decatri. As he said, the, the, the other third place teams who are currently in the 32 is not the teams that they need to worry about. They need to worry about the teams who are outside of the top four going into this last round of matches. And St. James High, out of the Western Zone, is one of those teams. Currently four wins from nine, and a win in their final match would bring them into the equation. They could knock the cartridge out, possibly. Mighty for May Day. Roberts leaves. Cockett retrieves. Slipped into space. Oh, the little man does brilliantly. Goes tumbling over. No call from the referee. And then Davis is able to recover and win it for Mayday. Anderson chips it forward. Sean Senior cuts it out. Throw coming up for the Cartwright College. 75 minutes on the clock. Made a lead by two goals to one. The Cartwright pushing for a spot in the second round. They need two goals to confirm their place as one of the best third place teams. Oh, that's a good turn. Ball inside the box. Glorious chance for the Shari Gale. And he spiked it over the top. Should have at least been on target, I think. And the Cartwright really need to make those opportunities count. Great work from Russell. Gale was arriving. Just could not keep it down. 
Right. Left footed shot blocked. Good period of play with this. Skiff. Yeah, it was always stretching. De have to throw everything forward now. Lots of teams threatening their position. In terms of one of the best fourth place teams, you have Monroe College as well, four wins from their nine matches. And a match to come. They actually have more points in the table than the cartridge, but their percentage in terms of wins, etc., less. So they are out of the top four at the moment, Monroe College. But as I said, they are knocking on the door as well. St. James High, Knox College as well with an opportunity. So dangerous times for the cartridge. <laughs> Not to mention that two of the other teams who are in the, the, the top four third place teams have favorable matchups at home. So, yeah, this would have been would a favorable matchup for, for the Cartwright as well. well I, I guess you would argue that as well, especially considering they won by four goals to nil a week ago. Good point. But yeah, both St. Mary High and Black River at home in their final fixtures. Andrew Simpson. The Cartwright in possession with the goal scorer Bailey. Loses possession to Dave Hines. Spread over onto the left hand side is looking for Sir Jay Roberts. Throw coming up for De Cartwright. Not a very good pass. He had acres of room in front of him to find a player in purple. Here is the dangerous Devonte Mighty. Anderson. Nephew chasing. And once again, Janoy Sinclair so alert. It's been a good game for the main day goalkeeper. Nephew for Wright. Wright wants an opportunity to get it on the left foot. Finds Anderson. Anderson with a team right footed shot towards the target. That gives Janoy Sinclair little to no bother. Mayday can head forward with Mighty. Trying to cut inside. And Jaheim Scaife, with a 17 year old, read it well. In the first minute, Mighty. Very well done by Andrew Simpson. Paley was unable to control. One by Dave Hines for Mayday. Hines is dispossessed. And the Cartwright College head forward. They need a couple of goals late on here. Here is Anderson. Back out to Bailey. Lifted inside the area, headed away. Mm -hmm. 
Well won by Pitt. Now with Sajay Roberts. Roberts does well. Doesn't have a lot of support forward. But decides to go for a little dink. Not sure if that's the position you want to be doing that from. Needed power and accuracy. Yeah, I think he realized when he looked up, he still had a lot of work to do. And had about four, four, three or four purple shirts around him. So figured he was better off taking a shot. And yeah, it looks a bit winded as well. It's been a long 81 minutes for me. They, they do have the lead, but they have worked hard. It's been a solid effort defensively from them. Concentration has been good. Yes, they have conceded one goal, but Sinclair has been excellent. And three-man back line. This has been a really good showing for a team that coming into this game had already conceded 22 goals. Always a good sign because you have so much to build on for next season. And it will keep the youngsters hungry as well, no doubt. Will be a massive blow for the Cartwright, especially if they don't end up advancing. But even if they do advance, it will be a blow to them because this was a game that they fully expected to win. As Roberts gets the ball inside, is this a chance? It definitely is. Oh my word. No whistle. Big off the line from Simpson. Now the assistant gets involved. Well, I'm trying to understand what the flag is for. Was it offside? Probably was, you know, that, that attempt there. Wow, what a clearance it was from Simpson. But just wondering if Bent was in an offside position. Bailey lifts this one over the top, looking for Nephew. Once again, Janoy Sinclair was off his line. Mighty wins it in the center for Mayday. They don't mind not keeping the ball long, Mayday. They just want to ensure the country can't get close to their goal. Booth won it in midfield, but it's been taken away from him. And the Cartwright College can head forward. But there's a lot of traffic to navigate in the middle. Comes across to Gale on this left side. Gale cuts inside on the right foot, trying to tee up a shot. Stretching in the final analysis. And the effort is team and right at Janoy Sinclair. A frustrated looking Omar Oxley. Yeah, the strikes from the cartridge have been disappointing. They have been weak. And even though a lot of them have been on target, they've never, a lot of them haven't really tested Janoy Sinclair. Mayday getting ready to make another substitution. Raheem Williams, the number eight, will be making his way onto the park. <laughs> Fourth assistant had 0-0 zero, zero at first. And he's replacing Malachi Booth, who has had a terrific match for Mayday. That's an interesting change. Yeah, big defensive midfield work from Booth. But maybe also sensing coach Thompson that he is a little tired and wants a fresh leg in that position. That one rolls across the face of goal. Here the sixth minute, and it's still Mendy with the advantage. Yeah. Getting to desperate proportions now for the Cartwright College. This is Gale. That attempted pass was almost trying to thread the ball through the eye of a needle. No success. The boys in green jerseys standing tall and strong, maintaining their shape late on. If anything, they've made it more difficult for the Cartwright College to create chances. Not that the Cartwright, I think, has created many in this contest.
they pretty much need a Saturday afternoon miracle now. The Cartwright, main day in possession with Colin Bent. Wins a free kick. So it'd be a massive victory if Ming Day are able to hold on. Free kick coming up for Ming Day. Wasted from Sean Senior. Steady in that centre back role today, Senior. Yeah, Senior Anderson and Forbes for me have done excellently. The three man back line. And to top it off, Anderson has probably got the winner for Mayday as well, he'll be hoping. But yeah, I think it's really a real solid performance. That senior who you're talking about now making that challenge in the heart of the defence line. But all three have done excellently, along with your goalkeeper, Sinclair. Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. This one, the go-ahead goal for Minty. Brilliant delivery from Devonte Mighty. And the header from Malik Anderson, equally as brilliant. Headed hard, headed down. And Jordan Marshall had no chance in goal. Minty taking a 2-1 lead. That could be the goal that gets them three points to end their campaign. Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play or the App Store. A number of channels for you to enjoy on the Sportsmax app. Sportsmax Plus, Sportsmax, Sportsmax 2. And a number of sport and event specific channels. If you're into Champions League, Europa League football, the channels are all there to enjoy. The Cartwright College not enjoying the fact that they are 2-1 down in a game that they need three points to solidify their place as one of the best third place teams in the competition as they look to hit forward and advance to the second round of the Da Costa Cup for the second time in as many seasons. Yeah, two teams have already done that. Clarendon College and Edwin Allen are doing battle as well in other Da Costa Cup action. At half time, Clarendon College lead Edwin Allen by two goals to nil to defend in the Costa Cup champions. I think Clarendon College have only let in one goal this season. They have been imperious once again. Here is Anderson for the Cartwright College looking for a late opportunity. But again, too much weight on the pass and Janoy Sinclair timing those runs to perfection. Panic mode is fully set in for the Cartwright College now. As that one got away from the 14-year-old Antoine Baker. We've hit 90 minutes. Now we look to the fourth official who says four minutes to be added. Four minutes for the Cartwright College to find two miracle goals. Four minutes for May Day to hold on to their fourth victory of the season. Here is Anderson for the country. Slips this one through for Russell. Is this the moment he makes his impact on the game? And he was shoved off the ball, Raheem Russell. 11 goals this season. And for a moment there, you thought he would increase that tally to 12. Not to be. Here is the opportunity. Look, that was great defensive work, you know. I'm not sure why that it was senior again in the heart of the defense. That was a great defensive, a, wait, great defensive awareness from him just to use his shoulder to throw Russell off balance. And Russell, the leading goal scorer, 11 goals on the season. You would have certainly put your money on him to bury that had he been fully settled. And I thought senior, just instinctive in terms of how he nudged him. 
and that made that made a big difference look at this pass going through russell here confident in front of go look at senior oh yes that's wonderful from senior just the awareness didn't want to extend the arm because then he would have probably given up a penalty but just to get his shoulder alongside and uh, tackles like that are what win man of the match performances here is davis for the country finds anderson Anderson runs into traffic. Davis helps him out. All booted upfield for May Day. Andrew Simpson now has bent with him. Finds Bailey, the goal scorer for the cartridge. Yeah, that's probably going to be a booking, isn't it? Right. Not too sure May Day will mind at this stage. They just want to ensure they don't give up another goal and they hold on to this 2-1 advantage. Captain again over the top senior. And it would have to come down to either senior or Malik Anderson for the man of the match, the number five who's probably scored the winner. But senior's performance in terms of a leader in that back line and some really telling challenges at critical times. You know, it's, it's really neck and neck, Ricardo. I know you rather, I, I know you've spoken highly of, of senior's work and what he has done. Obviously, Anderson has probably scored a winner, but Senior's 90-minute performance and his important tackles against a team that dominated them in the first fixture might just give him the edge, eh? Dimitri Alexander coming on for the Cartwright College. Agree with you, Chris. Of course, if it stays this way, still not done. A minute and a half ago. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. don't mean to bring the English Premier League into this, but it's about the only positive Manchester United Manchester United have had in recent times, so maybe the Cartwright need us cut metonymy. <laughs> yeah. Free kick coming up. Anderson floats this one in! Headed over the top! Oh, that was a glorious opportunity! It was Anderson. Yeah, the man who scored the brace in that 4-0 win, Giovanni Anderson. Provided the assist for their one goal and should have hit the target. Lovely delivery. The deliveries from De Cartre today have been excellent, but their finished product have not matched the deliveries. Can't want it much better than that. That was a delightful ball in from Raheem Russell. They can't complain about his deliveries today. They have been excellent. But as Chris pointed out, They have not been as clinical. That should have at least hit the target. We're into time added. On to added time. 95th minute. Mayday, Mayday. Upset alert. They turn the tables one week later. Produce their best effort of the season and beat the Cartwright College who have taken a dagger to the heart. Joel Thompson says, I told you so. We had the beating of this, the Cartwright team, and they have beaten them. A 68th minute winner from Malik Anderson doing the job. Mayday with their fourth win of the season. They get it done 2-1 in cool, cool Manchester. The Cartwright College will have to wait and see if they have done enough to move into the second round. We know me they haven't, but they have done enough for their fourth win. 2-1 over the Cartwright. Andre Farkasen, the man with the whistle. This important match, the Cartwright in the full purple, on the front foot early. Good strike coming in from Andrew Simpson. But Janoy Sinclair had a really good game between the sticks. He turned up at the important moments. He was there at the near post again, even though that was just wide from Javon Davis. And the Cartwright, even though they had a lot of pressure, they couldn't find an opener. And then they created that challenge that forced Jordan Marshall into that challenge, which gave up a penalty. And Javante Wright, who had scored two penalties leading into this match, 
scored his third from 12 yards with the right boot, wrong foot in Marshall. And his sixth of the season. And yeah, Mede with their first goal against Decatrix this year as well. After that 4 0 loss seven days before. Decatrix, they would draw level at the end of the nearing the end of the first half. Bailey with the strike towards the far post, beating an ever present Sinclair. Giovanni Anderson picking up his fifth assist of the season. And Bailey it was to add his third goal. 1 1 in the first half. It would go to the break like that. Decatret with this final opportunity in the first half. Look at this strike. It was a combo effort. First that strike which tongued the palms of Sinclair and then from the resulting corner a really good headed opportunity which wasn't buried. But yeah, Anderson, he buried his. Good delivery into the area from Mighty in and around the six yard area and a thumping head off from Malik Anderson, his first of the season. And that came after 68 minutes. It was good enough for May Day. They should have added a third, but Jordan Marshall was big. Yeah, 2-1 the lead. And then this acrobatic clearance off the line from Andrew Simpson to keep his team in it. But unfortunately for them, they couldn't find the equalizer or the go-ahead goal. That attempt from Giovanni Anderson, the last of it. And after 90 minutes, did Hartred suffer a loss against Mayday for the first time in four years. 2-1 Mayday. So, five shots on target from 17 attempts for Mayday. Decatri, they have the better of the attack in play, some nine shots on target from 20, but they just weren't clinical enough. Four yellow cards shown from Andre Farkasen. Decatri with the majority of the possession, but Mayday with the majority of the goals. It's a big win. Four wins in 10 games for Mayday. They win after 90 minutes by two goals to one. Our man of the match is with Kimani O'Sullivan, no other than captain, Mr. Senior. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm joined by man of the match, Sean Senior, the skipper. Sean, you were in tears after the game. Speak to me about that outpour of emotion. I just see you we fight to the end, sir. And it was a very tough game. I didn't believe that the boys have that many fights in them, sir. So I'm very proud of them. And that's a building block for the seasons to come, right? Seeing yes, that your team has it in them to pull off wins over rivals like this. Sir, sir, to me, sir, the boys do it very well. And these boys, as I see here, can play for three or four more seasons, even me, sir. So I'm very proud of them, sir, today. And you had an embrace with your coach, Coach Thompson, afterwards. Speak to me about what he told you. Because in the season, sir, I was very, emo I was very nervous. I started off, sir, and he... Motivate me, sir. So, I lo love to coach and the team, sir. Any words for the fans at home that are tuning in? For the fans that come support us, I'm very proud and thank you very much. All right, Sean, congratulations. Yes, sir. Yeah, Sean Senior there, skipper of May Day High. The winners, he's greeted by chance of skipper. Yeah. On to coach Auxili of the Cartwright. Coach, you said today was a final, didn't yes. get it done. How did you see the game today? I think it was a game where we created a number of chances. Unfortunately, we were not able to capitalize on the chances. You saw the game, there were um, instances where we were totally dominating possession of the game. And that's football for you. There are times when you, you play well, but the result just does not give you um, that favor that you would have anticipated. Do you think your team took it for granted that because you beat Mayday 4 0 earlier in the season, they could have coasted today? Well, as I told you earlier um, when we were speaking, I said that um, psychological, this team has some, some problems there, you know. Um, so I think it was more psychological today. Um, we didn't play according to game plan. I think we could have been more um, patient. We could have been more patient in our build-up. We got the chances. We could have been more composed when we, were, when we got the chances. But such is the um, football. I want to say congrats on me. They, they, they played today. They fought. And, and, and we give them credit. Well, coach, it's down to mathematics now. I hope you're keeping your calculator close for that Very third close. spot. Um, speak to me about how optimistic you are that you can make it through. Well, I still believe.
believe that we are in the mix for making it to the second round. Um, it's just a matter of who will be playing. I believe if Central should win their next game, then we should be moving on to the next round. However, I would have wanted it a better way, but um, let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, very optimistic, Coach Auxilly there. We'll be now joined by the man whose cry was revenge, mm -hmm. Coach Thompson. Yeah. Coach, revenge. Yes. And you made good on that I promise. How good you. was it? How good does it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. I enjoy this. See what I told you? If my boys come out here and play like how we trained, it's only Manchester can give us a fight. And you said your team was filled with youngsters. youngsters. Is this a platform for you to build and probably surprise a few next season? See, when you have a team with like 10 under 16 players, we are building and it goes through a process. And today, they let me feel overwhelmed. Is this you sending a message to the other teams looking forward that look out, May Day is coming next year? Sure it is a message, so they have to look out. For us next year, we're going to be the spoilers. And in terms of messages for the supporters at home that tuned into this game, any messages for them? Oh, I'm so grateful for these supporters. Even when they come to the bus and I say, remember, we can carry you on the bus. OK, coach, you're going to see me at the game. And when I look, it's our loyal supporters there. And that really gives us a moral boosting. And I love that. Congratulations, coach. Thank you, sir. Well, there you have it. Mainte surprising the Cartwright College. After losing to them last week by four goals to nil, they turn it around and win by two goals to one. The Cartwright still with a mathematical chance of moving through to the second round of the competition. But now they must wait and see if they have done enough. Manchester and Belair have done enough and they're coming up in our second match of the day. Yo, Issa, my schoolboy football look this season. People am ready, you know. All right, then, Pico, Manning Cup, Oliver Yashil, you make me link up. They watch the Champions Cup, Ben Francis, Baka Cup, which team are in the Championship this season. Yo, Issa, Baba Bandai, Baskool, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa, Missy Fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, bus load of supporters from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some are listening to Paris, they want some of what you TV too. Country and turn your night for one reason. Issa, schoolboy football, good come, look one, look all. 